This short film will reveal all of the tricks and secrets of mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis is the process in which cells multiply. It is the division of the nucleus. The genetic material is duplicated so that only one cell is passed on to daughter cells. Eventually, two cells magically emerge. Mitosis is important because it enables your cells to grow and develop, reproduce, and regenerate tissues in the body. Before a dividing cell enters mitosis, it undergoes a period of growth called anaphase. This is the holding stage, or the stage between two successive cell divisions. In this stage, the cell replicates its genetic material and organelles in preparation for division. The three stages are G1, S, and G2. The S phase is the period during which DNA is synthesized. The next stage is prophase. In this phase, the two chromatids remain attached to one another at a region called the centromere. Here, the nucleolus breaks down and disappears. Also during prophase, the spindle begins to form. Metaphase comes next in mitosis. Here, the chromosomes congregate at a plane in the middle of the cell called the equatorial plane. The ends of the spindle fibers are the poles to which the chromatids will migrate. The chromatids are attached to the spindle fibers at the centromeres. During anaphase, the two chromatids of each chromosome separate and move to opposite poles, as if they were being magically pulled along the spindle fibers by the centromeres. During telophase, new nuclear envelopes form around the two new groups of daughter chromosomes. The new nucleoli begin to appear, and eventually, as the formation of two daughter nuclei is completed, the spindle fibers disappear. The chromosomes uncoil to distribute equally in the interphase nucleus. Cytokinesis, which may begin before or after mitosis is completed, finally separates the daughter nuclei into two new individual daughter cells. At the end of mitosis, two distinct cells with identical genetic material are produced, each containing 46 chromosomes. Meiosis is a sexual reproduction in which the number of chromosomes are reduced by half through the separation of homologous chromosomes in a diploid cell. Just like in mitosis, during prophase 1, DNA condensation occurs, the nuclear envelope and nucleoli disappear, and the spindles start to form. The chromosomes first become visible here, and they are visible as tetrads. During metaphase, tetrads line up at the equatorial line. The spindle has completely formed. It is during prophase 1 and metaphase 1 that genetic recombination or crossing over magically occurs. In anaphase 1, tetrads pull apart and chromosomes with two chromatids move towards the poles. Moving on to telophase 1, chromosomes with two chromatids decondense and a nuclear envelope reforms around them. Each nucleus is now haploid. Two cells are formed and the cycle goes on. At the end of meiosis 1, each chromosome still has two chromatids. So going through meiosis 2 will reduce the amount of DNA back to normal. During prophase 2, chromosomes with two chromatids become visible as they condense and the nuclear envelope and nucleoli disappear and the spindle is forming. Next, in metaphase 2, the chromosomes with two chromatids line up at the equatorial line. The spindle is now fully formed. In anaphase 2, the chromosomes split so that a chromosome with only one chromatid heads towards each pole. In telophase 2, chromosomes with only one chromatid decondense and get surrounded by a new nuclear envelope. The four daughter cells are now all haploid and have the right amount of DNA. They are ready to develop into sperm or eggs. At the end of meiosis, there are four haploid cells, each with 23 chromosomes. Although meiosis and mitosis may seem very similar, there are some few key differences. In mitosis, it produces identical daughter cells, whereas in meiosis, the daughter cells are haploid. Also in mitosis, the genetic identity of the cells is identical to those of the original cell, whereas in meiosis, the daughter cells have a new assortment of DNA in each cell due to the crossing over that produces genetic diversity. So that's it. Thanks for joining us on our magical adventure through meiosis and mitosis.